everybody, it's Saturday and this place is a mess. And do you guys clean up as you're building a project or do you wait until the end of the project to clean it up? I guess I'm, I'm kind of a hybrid picker-upper. I, I usually do a little bit of both. I try to put things away as I'm working, but there's always a certain mess that ends up at the end of the project. Although this time, there seems to be a lot more of a mess left over for me to pick up. And it wasn't that big of a project. I think the problem was that I had to do so much in the house, I was constantly carrying things back and forth, so I would just set them down here on the table. I wanted to point out this cool sign I got from Greg Hellendrung a while back. He makes signs for a living, and so looks like this was carved out on a CNC. That is so cool, I love signs like that. And check out this logo sent to me by Lucas Dinkins. He made this out of a single piece of oak and he stained it two different colors. I thought that was a cool idea. Look how thin this is right there. <laughs> that was gotten it close. So I'll put you right up here. This comes from D.R. Ward, all the way from Somerset, England, and it's a, uh, let me see if it'll focus here. It's a round to it. We all say we're gonna get a round to it someday. And I wanna thank Eloyd Ray, who sent me one of these big novelty clothespins. He makes these and sells them at craft fairs for three and a half bucks, and I'll bet you that is a good seller. And looks like they'd be fairly easy to make. He actually sent me another a spring so that I can try one uh, for myself. Who wouldn't like a big clothespin, huh? He makes some of these out of exotic woods too and sells them for four and a half dollars. Not a bad profit margin. I wanna thank Eric Meyer for sending me this book on identifying wood species. And I thought, well, that's interesting and thank you. But then I noticed, oh, it's Eric who wrote the book. Wood, identifying and using hundreds of woods worldwide. Okay, let me get to the stickers. First, I wanna show you this big one sent to me by Josh Edwards. Woodworking for mere mortals, keeping the spray lacquer business alive since 2008. Okay, I'll start at the top and work my way down. Hey, here's a sticker from Brian over at Summers Woodworking. It's nice to see Todd Clippinger making videos again over at the American Craftsman Workshop. Pete's Wood Creations. Amir Tahari Woodworking. Cool logo on that one. Nick Mazeo, make it Mazeo. <laughs> I love the ox in this shop. Here's Mario at DIY Giveaways and Tutorials. CN Woodwork. YCMT, you can make that. Hey, it's David Pallance over at Rowdy Penguin Productions. I met David in Sacramento at the woodworking show a few years ago. Josh Edwards at Nerd Wood Designs. I guess it makes sense to put Geek Builders right underneath that one. Here's Bearcat. Hey, a sticker from Bill Wilson. Bob Lee's Workshop. NJR Workshop. And finally, Shop Built. Hey, have you checked out the new Mimo memos that I've been sending out? That's the, the Woodworking for Mere Mortals newsletter. You can sign up for it on the website if you haven't already done so. You might have signed up for it like a year ago, but then I only sent out like two. <laughs> but now, now we're sending it out on a regular basis, so you should be getting it every Tuesday or Wednesday in your, e in your email. Make sure you have it set so it's approved and doesn't go into a spam filter or something. We're really happy to start getting people on board for Home and Garden for Mere Mortals. I think we've got three, three maybe four people lined up. Just posted the first video today from Tom, who's new to YouTube and looking to get his channel started. So I think it'll be a good mix. We're, we're hoping to get a wide range of interests over on that channel. And of course, I wanna thank Catherine, because Catherine is the one who's doing all of this work. So if you haven't subscribed to Home and Garden for Mere Mortals, go do that now because there's gonna be more and more content coming to that channel. And again, if you're a creator and would like to contribute to that channel, just let me know. We're looking for gardening, home repair, home improvement, cooking. It'd be nice to have somebody who's really good at grilling outside. And I'm looking for an interior decorator design. Anything for the home. Did you guys catch my final bathroom project yesterday? Actually, it's not really the final project. It's kind of the final major project for the bathroom. There's a couple little odds and ends that I'll probably be making for the bathroom. I wanna make another towel bar for just a little hand towel and I'll, I'll use the same steel galvanized pipe that I used for the big one, but that's not gonna be a video project because it's just more of the same. And I also think that we're gonna make by we, I mean me, I'm going to make some little boxes to go on the main cabinet 
on those little shelves on the sides. My wife wants some of those, but I think she's just gonna buy some because I told her it'd be a while before I can get to those. So until then, she's, she's gonna buy some. But we need little bitty boxes, and that might be a video project if I can think of an angle for those boxes, something interesting. But it feels good to finally get that bathroom done. That's a big project. I guess we started working on that back in December to work on a project, a remodel project over a series of a few months. It really makes it go a lot easier and it's not quite as stressful and it gives you time to kind of figure out color schemes, what you wanna put in there, and that sort of thing. I guess in most rooms you don't have that luxury because you don't wanna live in that mess for so long. Although it hasn't been a mess because each project, once it's done, we can clean up, we can still use the bathroom. And remember, this whole project started because we got that new toilet. It's always one thing that leads to another. The Fix, The Fix sang that song. Saw Hardcore Henry last night. <laughs> That's a, that is a different kind of movie. It's all shot with a GoPro. It's the same GoPro I have, which is kind of cool that you can make a major motion picture using just one of those little GoPros. But it, if you don't know, Hardcore Henry is all shot in first person. It's, it's like a video game, really. And I think that this will probably be successful enough that we'll probably see more of these coming out in the future. I think this is gonna kick off a trend. It looks like the whole movie was shot in Russia which is also a little bit unusual, a little different. I liked the movie, at times it was a little confusing. There's, there's virtually no plot. I mean, there is a plot, but I couldn't really figure it out. It was just, it was just like, ah, just running around. It's very violent and bloody, but it's a fun film. Also, don't see it if you get motion sickness. I saw it with my wife and she had to keep her eyes closed for the entire movie because she gets car sick really easily and the handheld camera in that was just, too much for her, so I, I saw the movie alone. Oh, and I also wanted to let you know about the Woodworking for Mere Mortals website. We are improving the way that you'll be able to upload pictures of your own projects better than the old system, which is still there, but we're gonna be phasing that out in, in favor of a new system, which makes it tons easier. You can just upload your photo, it'll be there instantly. People can comment on it and you can put it in categories so that people will be able to, so that you'll be able to browse different types of projects. I think it's gonna be a big improvement. If you're a supporter over on Patreon, I'll let you know about that in the next couple days and let you get started on it so you can start to sort of beta test it and see if it works, that would be great. Oh, and speaking of Patreon, don't forget that at the $5 level and higher, I've got ad-free project videos for you every week. There's no micro jig, no me blathering on about Casper, or Harry's or anything else, just just the project video, if you like that. Plus, you can you can see both versions too, and you know whichever one you prefer. And I think for five dollars a month, that's pretty reasonable. Plus, no, there's no AdSense monetization on those videos too. Completely ad-free. I'm still doing my half marathon training. I was supposed to run 17 kilometers this morning, but the rain, and so I hope to do that tomorrow morning. A few weeks ago, I did the climb. That's actually what this shirt is: the Fight for Air climb which was up 555 California Street in San Francisco, and it's a 52-story building, and it's, it's just climbing up the stairs. So it's 100, 104 flights of stairs, because it's like two each way. And that was intense. It took me 15 minutes exactly. I, I scored like right in the middle of the pack. So I was pretty happy about that. I, I did pass a few people, which was surprising, and, but then there were people who passed me too. But you know, I started out this race and I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I'm pumped up. If I could run up 10 flights of stairs and walk the rest, I think I would be doing good. And I didn't, I ran up, I think it was like eight flights of stairs. Then I was like, oh my God, running up stairs Walking upstairs is really hard. It's a lot more difficult than just running. I've, got, I've, got, I've actually got a couple more races scheduled. I've got one next weekend. I'm running this Presidio race, which race runs across the Golden Gate Bridge. That's a 10K run. And then I've got another 10K run the week after that here in, in Marin. Anyways, that's all I've got for now. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna see if I can straighten up this shop a little bit. I'll talk to you guys later.